Hello and welcome back to Lord of the Collections. I'm your host, Tyler Macklem, and this is my co-host, Valkris. And we are joined today by with a very special guest, Andy Gunn. Andy here was uh, a featured extra on all three Lord of the Rings films. And he is here today to tell us kind of his experience uh, in the movies and what it was like, you know... Um, I think most major Lord of the Rings fans have kind of fantasized at one point, man, I'd love to be an extra, you know. I remember talking with my friends about if I had a time machine, because, you know, I was like eight years old. If I had a time machine, I'd love to go back and just, just be an extra in Lord of the Rings. But Andy actually did it. And so uh, we're really excited to hear his uh, his experience on set and what it was like. So, Andy, how did you kind of get your foot in the door? Did you get a call from your agent? Did you see an ad in the paper? You know, how did you kind of get get the opportunity? Uh, thanks, Tyler. Uh, it's great to be here. Yeah, um, pretty much just I had an agent at the time because I'd done a couple of – I'd done one play at the local theater, um, and I just walked downtown and got an agent, and the agent just called and said, hey, you know, we've got this – Hobbit movie thing coming up for next year. No one really knew much about it. I didn't really know much about it. I, before that, I wasn't really a Lord of the Rings fan. Fan. I wanted to be an actor, and I want. I was getting into music and DJing and stuff, so I sort of had some experience and the one play. And they were like, "We, we want you to do an audition for this, for this movie, for the thing." And I was like, oh, "Okay." So I think I originally read some script for. They were like, we want you to read some a couple of pages of script for, for the um, Alpha Lieutenant for Hal there. Mm. And I was like, oh, cool, man. You sort of went along. And <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing, but like they gave me an orc sword in the audition and I read some pages and I was like, this is foreign because I, I wasn't familiar with the story. Mm. And then they were like, just move around like an elf, you know, just just do some elving, elvish kind of what you think would be an elf elf move and it was like well this is a weird sword you know it's like <laughs> yeah and, and that was it um so i was like walked away from there yeah I'm, I'm, i I might have a part like a speaking part in this lord of the rings hobbit movie that i know nothing about right and then there was like cattle calls where you, you know you go in and there's like dozens of people and they're like okay i want you to run across the room or you know get into twos with other random wannabe actors and, and or extras and you know give you a little sword and strip down to your underwear so they can see your body and then do some moves. Mm -hmm. So it was quite random. Um, and then ultimately it was just like the agent was like, you know, do you want, do you want to do two weeks as a, as a fighting elf? And, um, and I was like, of course, you know, and the agent was like, you know, no, I don't want you to do any more because if you want to be an actor, we can't have you on set as an extra. It's kind of like you're kind of wasting your time and shooting yourself in the foot. Um, but this this went on. I'm sure I did like three or four different auditions, cattle calls as they used to call them for extras over the year. Over I think it was like 1999 before 2000, and then I was back in my hometown um, and from Wellington. I was kind of like you know laboring, kind of I was I was really wanting to 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 be in this this massive event because everyone the whole world was talking about it. And everyone in my world, theater and film and music in Wellington, and then. Um, I was kind of doing some soul searching and um, I was hanging out with these Christian guys and, you know, I got raised a Catholic, but I'd sort of drifted away from church and kind of things. And this guy was like, what are you doing? And I was like, um, I'm actually looking for God, you know? <laughs> and he was like, what, what, what are you talking about? And he goes, go home and just, just reach out to God. And I was like, oh, okay. You know, so I did. And, you know, I was like, God, can I, um, can I find out if you're real and can I have a job on Lord of the Rings? And just at that moment, the white light came from it. felt like the sky and went down through the top of my skull and went down my spine and shone out my chest. Hmm. And I was, you know, I was soberer than a judge. And I was like, this is weird, you know. <laughs> is this magic? Yeah, <laughs> What's yeah. this? Is this magic weed or pipe weed? But, you know, I was clean and sober. And, and, and I had a cry and I, I, I didn't feel any fear for the first time in my life. You know, for the hmm. first time in my life, I was like 20, 24 and a half. And then fell asleep was laboring for a guy, a grumpy guy. And he was like, oh, your mom's on the phone. And then I talked to my mom and she was like, oh, your agent called. You've got your like seventh audition for this Hobbit movie. You've got to go to Wellington tomorrow, son. So I was like, hey, man, you know, 
you know, that money you owe me. <laughs> Keep mm-hmm. it, man. I'm off to off to join the circus. And I remember that last audition, it was just me and this other kid gave us the swords and we were working with the actual Lord of the Rings stunt team and they'd already been doing some some filming and, you know, some random filming. Mm-hmm. And they were like, they showed us some short sword forms and they said, right, this is your opportunity. You've got the casting agent sitting right there. This is it, essentially. You know, you, mm. you're going to be in or out. And, and, and the guy that I was working with, he was real nervous, but I was nervous. I, I was just kind of like, I've got nothing to lose, man. Like, <laughs> it's mm. kind of make or break. So we did the sword forms and we ran around and did our thing. And that, that's, and I think it was a few weeks later or a few months later, that's when the agent said, hey, do you want to, that was it. Do you want to do a, you know, like a three-day, four-day stunt workshop with the Lord of the Rings stunt team? Mm-hmm. And, and, and I was like, of course. Like, how, why wouldn't I want to do that? You know, this is a dream come true. So before the filming actually started, we we went up and to one of the warehouses in Stone Street in Miramar and Wellington, and it was probably like 15 or 20 mostly guys. I think there might have been one lady, but they were, they were just like martial artists and teaching yeah. us all the different, you know, sword forms for you know the different characters so the fighting elf the prologue elf the orc the god you know everyone and everything and then we were having to perform them to the stunt coordinators oh yeah to essentially audition to try and get into the stunt team um, mm. and i remember when the guy came around to watch me and my partner um what was his name i can't remember his name kester the guy i was working with yeah, he's a good dude people thought we were brothers they're always mixing us up like mm-hmm. doubles I got real nervous and I, I fudged up my, I think we were using the elven sword, like the fighting off sword. Okay. Whereas yeah. Kiss did a real good job and I like fudged it up and I was like, oh, I just knew I'd blown it or blown my, my one opportunity to actually be in the, in the team. Mm. And I think one guy got, got in, um, Jay, uh, what was his name? Alan Smith, he got in and he became Legolas Greenleaf's stunt double. Oh, cool. And then another guy from that group, they called us the pack and save um, sort of stunties, you know, like the sort of C team stunties that were like, okay, yeah, like guys that were kind of like not going to take a high fall or get set on fire, but just do like all these background fights, mm. three to four second background fights with swords and stay in character, hopefully. Right. And another guy, Jacob Tamuri, he got in. So, he, you know, it was like, oh, wow, these guys were, you know, got selected. But I was pretty happy because I was a little bit tentative, you know, to, to be in that kind of uh, slightly out of the extra, out of the 4,000 or the 26,000 or whatever, but we had a little crew of about 20 people and we were, yeah, we were the PNS kind of, we used to call ourselves the stunt extras, but we were just, we were featured extras, you know, we, we'd done a little bit of the combat training with the stunt team and we were like, yeah, we can, we can do anything <laughs> mm-hmm. except sit on fire and, you know, right. you know, maybe go toe to toe with a principal actor. Um, so or they, one of the lead. They kind of taught you, you know, like how to move like an Urukai or how to yeah. walk really straight like an elf, you know. And that was yes. kind of what you were doing at the stunt stuff there. And uh, essentially, yeah, like, and, and it was, you know, dive rolling on concrete and learning how to fall. And, um, <laughs> oh, man, it was like, it was pretty cool. So then by the time we got onto set, I think it was only like in the next couple of weeks, that's when the agent said, you know, you've done this course. Two weeks, two weeks as a fighting elf. And I was like, cool, man, that, that sounds like fun. You know, I can do that. Mm-hmm. And I had no idea what I was doing. And I think day one on set was into fighting elf costume. So um, you're not really knowing what to do. But I think that was straight into night shoots for Helm's Deep. So it was okay. the middle of summer, it was like, you know, New Zealand summer. And, you know, going down the cafe, getting a massive all I can eat food feed because not knowing having no idea what the film catering would be like and just feeling nervous and anxious and catching catching a bus out there because it was right it was right basically in a suburb right next to the airport stone street studios mm. but this time we were out in lower hut which was helm's deep and getting out there and it was just like tent town you know like massive big like wedding marquees mm. full of costumes it was a big food tent and then so we'd get our get our breakfast on and then we'd get our costume on. And I think I remember that first day was was fighting elf. And it was like 25 or 30 degrees. It was insane. So putting on the plasticky, not the hero stuff, just the plasticky kind of armor and the, the skirts and then the sort of skirt armor. And I remember those those brown suede boots. Okay, yeah. And, and the plasticky, so the sort of synthetic um, wig. Because okay, if you yeah. weren't a hero, 
you had fake hair, <laughs> you had right, plastic right. ears. And then the, the ill-fitting helmet sort of pushed, pushed those ears in and it felt a little bit like a vice. And then out to, out to set to, to, to wait for your, for, your, for your shot, you know, for your scene. Um, was it was it a lot of stand waiting, you know, hurry up and wait kind of? Absolutely. Um, like I mean, we just weren't we just weren't prepared for it. We were just like, you know, come from the city, we were in comfortable clothes and sneakers and things and mm -hmm. running around and, and just getting used to it, getting used to the you know, living living in a costume, you know, like I think the next night I was a Urukai, so I was straight into those kinds of you know, the prosthetic armor and had massive muscles and oh yeah. Quite heavy. Um, but I think it was like quarter weight chain mail or thousands of little plastic um, electroplated little rings, as you as you probably already know. Yeah. And then that, that kind of fiberglass -y big, you, you know, Uruk armor <laughs> and, and, the, and the sort of and the mask and the helmet was just crazy because it was so hot. Mm. And then you were having to fight and, you know, do these little fight scenes with. I remember that the shield was kind of cool because it had like two two little leather straps. So it would have been mm -hmm. weird if they had one, but it was quite nicely nicely designed. So you kind of either had a long sword as a Uruk or a, or a short one. I like the short one because I used to call it like a cheese cutter. It was like this big, oh, like yeah. big cheese knife with a big spike on the end. Yeah. And then and then so you, you get out there and then I think it was like the – then we one of the favorite things was like you're running around and you've got these little – as a Uruk, you've got these tiny little slits. So it was like very letterboxed and you're just cruising around and you're fighting – <laughs> you're having to fight but that's that's the only thing you can see it's like these the two little cuts so you've got not much not much visibility but yeah, you know, yeah. Just make um but i remember that my one of my first fight scenes i was fighting they said you're going to do a couple of beats of a fight against legalist and i was like oh cool and they didn't tell me that it wasn't it wasn't actually legalist it was um morgan from melbourne who's this pretty awesome stuntman one of the best and I just went straight up to him and I was like, oh, hey, with, with my Uric helmet. And I was like, oh, hey, man. Um, oh, hey. <laughs> I was like, really? I was like, really? Good? And yeah. he goes, oh, hey, I'm not, I'm not legalist. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not Orlando Bloom. I'm, I'm Morgan. I'm from Melbourne, bro. Like, it's all, it's all good, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. basically just like, hit me here, hit me here. <laughs> and he's like, and then I'll stab you in, in the stomach or the chest and then you sell it, grip on, fall back, and then you die. So it was like real simple stuff, you know. Like, yeah. you, would have, you would have loved to, to have done it. And so we did a couple of rehearsals, ran through, and then, and I think one of the takes, you know, the long Uruk treads went into a, like a brazier, like a fire. And so they started, they, they caught on fire mm. and they had a cool cut. So I was lying burning. I was like, <laughs> 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 and I was starting to freak out because I was still on the helmet with the letterbox. So I was like, <laughs> yeah, covered in like <laughs> urethane. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and then, then they just came up and they just, you know, they put it out and stuff and, nice. you know, but yeah, I don't know. It was kind of that was fun. Um, so almost, what? Almost been into death. What did you find more challenging? I guess costume wise, because I know I'm told the the elven armor was very stiff and it kind of difficult to move in. But then the urukai, you know, you're wearing a full body suit of armor and urethane, and it's like you're saying it's hot out and you can hardly see. What did you find more challenging? For me, I mean, every, I guess everyone's kind of different, but like for me, probably the hardest costume was probably the Uruk, mm -hmm. the Uruk high costume, um, because there's so many layers. Like they put you in the kind of poly kind of under layer things. They powder them up so you can get into them, and then you put on those muscles. Mm -hmm. Then you put on like the, the shoes, like the sh it's all about your shoes, like this big Uruk feet with the sort of sandals, and yeah, it was quite, it was quite kind of, it was pretty gumby. You know, like isn't pretty goofy having these massive feet, um, but also very hot because it was so hot, um, like 25, 30 degrees sitting around in the weekends mm. wearing like a puff jacket, you know, like a padded jacket and, you know, goose down. And people are like, why are you wearing a, a, a like a ski jacket in, in, in the summer? And I'm like, oh, like um, I need to sort of just – metabolize because if i get to work on monday and i've been wearing a singlet all weekend i'm gonna fry as soon as i because we're doing a lot of uruk stuff and mm -hmm. they're like you're doing it next week i'm just like i'm just gonna cook my body's not gonna know what's happening so it, it worked um mm. so i was cold i was like staying you know wearing all these 
maybe wearing a beanie. <laughs> Interesting. Um, but yeah, the, but the Elven the Elven costume was cool. The hero uh, it was okay. It was manageable because they put some of them because of the chest. It felt like it kind of restricted your breathing sometimes. Like the the hero mm-hmm. costume in particular, like when I did that. Um, the feature that was in the hero, so it was that electroplated fiberglass, shiny gold leaf chest okay, stuff, yeah. which was uh, very, it's very much just a cage, so it's very restrictive in your breathing. Mm. So it was like, started to get a bit anxious quite a few times, but the non hero um, fighting off stuff was actually okay. Mm. I think it was, yeah. And sometimes they put little extender bits in the back, so they kind of, and then they'll cover it with your cloak, so it's like allowing you to breathe. So that was actually pretty cool. Oh, nice. But the most, cool. probably the most comfortable costume out of all of them was the Gondorian Ranger. Mm, that makes uh, sense. Costume. Yeah, like the sort of Faramir kind of. That was phenomenal. Eh? I was like, <laughs> yeah, it was comfy shoes, comfy cotton pants, and a big woolen cloak. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I was, yeah, that was the best by far. Like the props. Yeah. Oh, no, maybe, yeah, that, that and Rivendell Elf. Yeah, that was okay, crazy. Yeah. Like, yeah. A pair of ballet shoes, a pair of little kind of feel like you're in China or Japan. <laughs> and, um, I love <laughs> this, little slippers. And um and yeah, just zipping around in like a silk gown or something. Mm. Um yeah, in terms of comfort wise. So So you, you cut your teeth at Helm's Deep there and or they called it Hell's Deep, I think, at the time. And uh <laughs> Yeah. I mean it was I mean it Pro, yeah, it was Helm's Deep, and we didn't realize, like, I think it was, like, 16 weeks. It might have been 18 or 20 weeks, but it was definitely a good, you know, couple of months. What's that? Mm-hmm. Of nights. Yeah, yeah. there, was day, there was days happening there as well. There was some oh. day stuff. Yeah. But there was, oh. there was a lot of nights, yeah. Did you ever get hurt or suffer any injury or like have to be out for a day or two because you took a bad bad fall or twist an ankle or anything like that me myself personally or or did you say anyone or no just you i'm okay, sure it yeah, probably uh, happened to a few guys but yeah i mean it was often like i remember doing a, a scene when we were running down um it was vigo and a bunch of fighting elves and we sprinted down and then we sort of cut in and the, and the Euro guys put their, their big, long sort of pikes down. I remember um, I twisted my ankle in the weekend. And so, like, I was running in those those elven suede boots. And my ankle just started to seize up as I was sprinting down the hill because we were just sprinting but trying to make it look smooth on right. this really uneven ground. And I was just like, oh, trying to just hold a straight face <laughs> and then having to sort of do a little push the pike out of the way, like, real fast. Like, yeah. Um, but that wasn't fun. But, um, I think I'd fallen off my bike, like just when I was leaving on the final day of the stunt workshop, I had quite a fast road bike, just a, you know, push bike, um, pedal bike. And I remember doing the toe clips up quite, quite tight. And it was like three days of, you know, sword forms and dive rolling and falling and cool stuff. And then just macking it down like the main road. And then this lady opened her car door. And, you know, when you hit the car door, I stood straight up, straight down. So it's landed up at the, like at the top, the whole force of myself on the shoulder, and I was like just lying there trying not to KO, and I was like in shock, and it's like this Chinese lady, she's like, "Oh, are you okay? Are you okay?" Because <laughs> like, oh. my bike was still tied onto me, and then so like I hit the first day of filming with a real sore shoulder, so I was just like popping like whatever I could to mm-hmm. you know any kind of painkillers. I didn't care. I was like, "I'm not missing this. I'm not missing this." Um, but I just managed it, and. Um, and ultimately, I was just, I was pretty lucky. Like a lot of people got, you know, injured and bits and pieces and broke bones and had strains. And I think I remember seeing like Vigo like slam down on one of the stuntmen's head and um, broke his helmet and like <laughs> pretty much split his head oh, up. And wow. so I remember they were just stapling his head back together. They're just like, <laughs> I was like, well, what are you guys doing? I was like, just stapling my head, bro. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. as you do, you know. <laughs> But um, I was pretty lucky. I was I was kind of paranoid about getting injured, so I was trying not to get injured pretty much the whole time I was there. I'm I'm told John Reese Davies when when he had some fight scenes, you know, he would he would just hit the stunt guys every time. Like he wouldn't try and miss. He would just <laughs> hit them every time. So I can understand uh, 
I can definitely believe it when you get, you know, you say a lot of guys got hurt. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Eh? Like, um, I mean, Vigo was a former stuntman, so he did all his own stunts. And there was a guy, I think his name was Kirk. One of the, he's quite, I think he's either a stunt coordinator or similar. Mm -hmm. He was in sort of dressed up as, as Aragorn. And um, Aragorn was like, well, I'm going to be doing all the work or 99% of it. So we just have that guy in a tracksuit, not in, he doesn't need to be in a costume. It's kind of a waste of time. Mm. Um, but he was going hard on the, on stunts with doing big hits and they were okay. And they were selling those hits and yeah, there was some serious big hits happening. And it was mm. like, oh, <laughs> like I wouldn't want to be on, on the receiving end of that stuff. Mm. And also when I did a cameo for the wardrobe department when we were on location up in um, Mount Doom or um, Mount Ropehu or the Rangapur Desert, we got a lot of the uh, guys and girls from the New Zealand Army Defence Force to come in and you know, hundreds of them to, you know, have, I think it was orcs and Gondorians, you know, just mm -hmm. <laughs> And, and I think someone said, like day one, they 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 just they were just turned it into a game of like American football or New Zealand rugby. And <laughs> they were all in costume. <laughs> they had like all the um, weapons, and they were just like just literally killing each other. Eh? I was like just just murdering each other. Like, I mean, I don't think anyone died, but but you could hear it. You could hear this like you know plasticky. You know, so and, and the swords are, and the weapons have got like I don't know steel inside them, but they've got some kind of plasticky thing on the outside. But right, and also a lot of weapons went missing as well. That like those first few days, it was like, where's your sword, man? Like, where's your Gondorian? You know, double-edged sword. Well, I don't know. You know, it's on eBay now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's vanished, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. So did, um, did but you I get know, a? Like, did you get a chance to work with Vigo at all at Elm's Deep there? Or, um... Um, bits and pieces. Um, probably quite a lot. Like he was probably in a lot of the lot of scenes and things that we did, but we kind of ended up taking it for granted because we were there like every day. Mm. And, you know, like, as I said, I did that one was, was probably it was me and another sort of, PNS stunt guy or PNS extra, and then about six stunt guys will be did the running down and then pushing the pipes away. That was quite a cool scene. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, the only feature that I did in the whole trilogy, which was just firing an arrow, standing next to Vigo, and that's the pit apart from that photo that they used in the trailer. Um, but yeah, often we were providing background <laughs> services as either help or. Mm -hmm. or, or you're yeah, just so much that it's kind of blurred into into one almost um yeah it's just so much happening um constantly yeah it's a little Makes bit sense. blurry it's weird talking about stuff 20 years ago but yeah yeah, yeah. so after how yeah, yeah i was gonna say after yeah. how much deep what did you kind of move Hang on into? tyler I got, oh you got a question sorry i got a question uh before we move on from helms deep uh so there are famously some scenes that were uh, not used in the movie, ultimately, um, involving Liv Tyler being at Helm's Deep, yeah. um, which Peter Jackson eventually did, decided to cut that part of the storyline. Were you part of any of those earlier shoots? Do you remember seeing her there on set? Or Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, Velcrist, um, good question. Um, I think it was my first night or one of the first nights, could have even been the first night on set at an X quarry, otherwise known as Helm's Deep, and it had layers and levels, and you go, we were right up in the top level, and there was, like, different parts of Helm's Deep. Mm -hmm. And we'd, I think this night we'd waited until – so we our call time was, like, 5.30, and then wrap-up time, lunch at midnight, and then wrap-up time at, like, I don't know, five thirty in the morning or what have you. Get your costume off, get in your car and leave, kind of thing. I know I'd get home at about nine thirty with traffic, but yeah, this night we'd waited till about four in the morning. Might have even been three or two, two, three or four in the morning, but it, which felt like a long time. And it was like Liv Tyler, you know, like Arwen had arrived, and all she had to do was um, 
because we were right there. We were like, I, I was playing a dead elf that night, which was quite crazy. So it was my job to just lie with my knee under my other knee and I couldn't feel it because it had gone to sleep with a, a neck cut, quite a gruesome one, as a hero elf did. And she essentially just had to like kill a couple of Uryx or, you know, just do a couple of couple of beats with her sword, grab Legolas Greenleaf's hand and then just walk out of shot. And that was it. And she did it, but she didn't want to do it, but she had to walk through it. And I think, I think someone was saying it was Bob Anderson, the sword master. He was like egging her on. I think he might, was he the guy that played Darth Vader or trained him or I don't know, like, if you know yeah, about Star the, Wars. The, the name rings guy. a bell. Yeah. This massive guy. And I remember him saying, just, just go for gold, girly. Just do it. And she's like, oh, hey. <laughs> and I remember that scene, but I remember she turned and said, um, like there was a, in between in between shots, she turned and looked at me and she was like, hey, do you want to trade places? <laughs> Thank you for being out here. And she was like, real nice. And I was like, oh, you're, you're the least, you're the Liv Tyler, you're our, how amazing is this? You know, like. Yeah, no kidding. And I was That's like, awesome. well, it would be weird changing places. Like, <laughs> imagine me as that one. <laughs> but yeah, like, I don't know. It's funny. And then, I don't, yeah, as you might, I don't remember seeing that anywhere. That little that little sequence, and there's there's potentially other sequences and scenes that were that she featured in that I, I either don't know about or can't remember. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Was there other sequences that you know about for sure, including things like that? That I know that when um, when they when they ride down the causeway there, she was her or her character was originally there. I don't, I don't know if it was her, uh, her, her stunt double would have been on the horse, I'm sure. And uh, yeah. when they decided to kind of cut that plot line, they CGI'd like a Rohan Royal Guard over her. Um, oh, okay. So I, I, <laughs> I'm aware of that. I do remember one time we, because we did a lot of day stuff out at Helmsteep. And I, I mean, I remember there was a whole lot of horses lined up. Um, towards the back of a kind of a set, and then we were all. I can't remember whether we were, you know, Urukai or Gondorian soldiers or what we were doing. There was just so much happening. We might have not even been in the set. We might have not even been in the shop. But we were watching on, but there was a bit of a battle that ensued, and Arwen called cut, and 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 it was a second unit director. I can't remember his name. It was Mahafi, director Mahafi or someone? Mm -hmm. He said something like, "Hey." Hey, you know, Arwen, like, don't don't call cut. You know, why why did you call cut? Like, there was some amazing action happening here. Like, there's horses. You're on a horse. You're running around, and you know, you're doing your action. Please tell me why you said cut. And she's like, oh, I, you know, this is in front of like 300 people. Like, I I hit the horsey in his eye with my sword. <laughs> and it was like a bit, like people were just laughing, just like, oh, like what, like crazy. And he was like, oh no, yeah, yeah. he was like, oh no, 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 please, please, kindest first lady, please don't cook cut, please don't worry about the horses. We have teams of horse wranglers that'll save the yeah. horse's life. And you just burn ten thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's like, you just, you just, you just keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> it was, it was just funny. It was just, it was just, and then other stuff was yeah. happening, and we were just laughing. It was like theater, you know. I was like, this is. Mm. This is insane, but I don't remember that or stuff like that anywhere in the movie as well. So God knows. I I, I just I just thought of another. Uh, I um, it's quite prominent in the behind the scenes DVD where the the Urukai start uh, thudding their spears and kind of taunting the elves um, on the wall, and they start kind of doing the the Maui kind of oh war chants and stuff were you were you involved in that at all or yeah i mean it it's it's a little bit blurry but i do remember bits and pieces of that stuff and yeah there was guys that were that were using yeah using the the, the maori indigenous war dance the haka and mm -hmm. you know or, or something similar um to to get hyped up but i i don't remember being Actually, I remember. I remember there was a whole lot of us. There was hundreds of us standing, and it was it was that just before the breach, like we started to kind of. I do. I do. I'm remembering something now, something vague, and I was probably a Uruk that night. But yeah, they were all we were, heading, we were hitting our chests, we were, yeah. or, or we were banging our pikes or our spears or something. 
That could yeah. be. Yeah, I mean, it sounds really funny. I remember it the, sounds really cool. Yeah, in the actual documentary, I think uh, you see Peter Jackson talking about they went to uh, they went to a stadium, and I think they had oh. about ten thousand spectators, and he's there with all the sound set up and the microphones, and he's. He's getting everyone to do like the beginning of a rugby game, basically have the ch the crowd chanting and banging their feet. And so they recorded that. And that's what you hear over the sound that you guys were making, because there probably weren't enough of you there to, to get the, the amount of uh, noise that he wanted to generate, because there are supposed I to be 10,000 yeah. rooks in front of the walls. So uh, yeah, I did that's... remember hearing about that. Yeah, that, someone talked yeah. about that. Um, but I do remember... It could have been a similar build up. So was that when the the Urukai were pretty much gearing up to breach the wall of Helmsteep? Is that the thing they were sort of firing up and then there might have been a berserker that ran in with the yeah, um, like, RPG. Yeah. In in the <laughs> uh, film, but I do remember that. Yeah, they no, I do remember that. Like we were out there and it was night and there was potentially hundreds of us up at the top level at um, Helm's Deep, at the quarry in Lower Hutt, Wellington, New Zealand, and they had these mass, they had a crane or even a couple of cranes with a rain tower, and there was mm -hmm. one night where we were gearing up to breach, and they just tested, they were like, we're gonna, you know, I don't even know if they told us, but they were like, they tested the rain tower on us, and it was this big commercial thing with pipes that looked like a big clothes, you know, dryer or clothesline in the sky, and it just dropped this just immense water on us. Mm -hmm. Um Hence, you know, movie rain. And, like, a lot of us got hypothermia and stuff because it was cold, you know. It was, like, one in the morning. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and we just got drenched. And, um, and, and you know, people were turning blue and some people were getting in ambulances. And I was just a bit tired. I was a bit cold and wet. But I was, like, you know, to one of the paramedics, I was, like, oh, I'm a bit cold. Can I go home? And he was, like, no, nah, man, get out of here. You know, you're, you're an <laughs> idiot, you know. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I am. I just, I'm just, I just want to go home, you know. I'm, I'm wet Europe, you know. But um, yeah, I think over that same week, that was when they, we were up in that same place, and that's when the bazooka went in and dropped the bomb and mm. reached the wall. But we were to charge as Eurex, and that was a quite a good, a good night where they said you're just going to charge through the, the the hole in the wall. Essentially, that's what you're doing, and go. And so we all charged through, and they didn't tell us that the tsunami, they had a massive, some kind of big reservoir of water that they just tipped, and it basically made it like a, a man-made tsunami and went down through the breach and just knocked out, you know, a good couple of rows of guys in front of me. Yeah. And I was a bit taller with the litter box, so I had my little cheese cutter knife and a shield, <laughs> and I was running through. And the guys went down into the water, and it was probably like knee deep. And I just running over the top of them, you know, and they were, they were starting to drown some of these guys. And he's just, I was like, I'm not drowning. I'm not going under. He yeah. just ran through, made it through, and then up, mm -hmm. up into the quarry, up this real raggedy, stony, essentially inside a castle. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then they just carried on and then called cut. And there's like, you know, like fake movie rocks, like floating in the water. <laughs> and, that, and that was their reason for cutting, not that they, you know, because they were like, oh, we can, we can save those Europe's, you know. Yeah, There's yeah. just a couple of polystyrene rocks floating around. Like, oh, cut, cut, cut. You yeah, know, we're not we're not using that one. But we did it a few times. But that first one, I'll never forget because it was a surprise, you know. like I can't believe they didn't tell you. <laughs> and, and, the best you know, take because, yeah. That, that, and that's they, what they wanted, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Because the Oryx exactly wouldn't know cool. either. So to get that, that capture that element of surprise on, on the extras reaction, uh, I mean, that that's filmmaking. So <laughs> that's pretty interesting. <laughs> that's great. Absolutely. Just, absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what they wanted. That's what they told us they wanted. And we were like, oh, we were like, oh, we're guinea pigs. <laughs> like, you guys are guinea pigs. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's, that that's great. Though. You know, you just going through the water and it's like i'm not drowning it's either you or me and i'm gonna keep going <laughs> yeah it's, it's interesting too. Out of the way. It's yeah. of, you know, american football or rugby you know and it was kind of like i was like man this because it's dicey you know like mm. yeah it's but, interesting because the way that film that that scene is you were at in the movie you're one of the Uryx that are going through the breach and you're one of the elves that are charging to uh to seal the breach. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like yeah, kind of fighting went. against yourself there. Yeah, exactly. It was like sort of, sort of like uh, you know, like um, and there was rivalry. There was a lot of good, you know, 
solid kind of rivalry, you know, in the food tent and sort of just the culture of being on set, all the Uruk are over here and then all the elves are over here. And mm. Just giving each other shit, you know, just, just catcalling and trash talking to each other and, um, you know, just mocking each other and, and, and on a daily. And that, that was good. It was fun. It was because mm-hmm. the poor Uruks were kind of like, they couldn't, they were sweating. They were, it was too hot. You're always going like this because you just, you've got all these muscles and all that. You've got too much armor and then you've got mm-hmm. your head helmet with your mask and just constantly rocking up to Eurex as an elf and going, oh man, you got to take your mask off, bro. Like, you know, we've got food in 10 minutes, bro. And he's, he's not wearing his mask or his helmet. And he's like, shut up, you know, shut up. You're an idiot. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm an idiot, but look at you, man. Look at those muscles, man. Like, <laughs> so we had a lot of fun just clowning each other, eh? you know, like uh, on the daily. Um, yeah. Oh, Hey, didn't see you there. Just checking out my new, uh, Witch King mini helm that I got from uh, this episode sponsor, CastleCon. CastleCon is your home for all things Middle Earth. When it comes to collectibles, whether it's United Cutlery or Weta, CastleCon has the lowest prices online. Whether that's their products or their shipping, they won't be beat with great customer service. Lord of the Collections has been using. CastleCon for all our orders now for the last year or so, and we highly recommend them. Uh, come on by and give them a give them a look, and uh, they will provide you with everything you need here to get started collecting or to continue collecting Middle Earth. And tell them uh, Lord of the Collections said hi. So, Andy, um. What were some of your favorite memories from your experience on Lord of the Rings? Was it stuff, you know, offset kind of joking with the other stunt guys and, or, can, you know, what do you kind of remember that really fondly? I guess, yeah, like it became like a kind of, like a family, like a kind of a big crew of people, you know, extras and crew, um, just kind of hanging out together, like, because we spent so much time together, we got to know each other and we could, you know, sometimes do like six days and and then maybe go out and have a drink and a dance on a Saturday night if we were if we had the energy, which we sometimes didn't, but it was kinda like, yeah, it just became like so much fun just spending time with people because there was so much downtime between shooting and shots and you know, you might be sitting around waiting for clouds. Um, literally for a couple of hours to try and get that that shot or lighting or um, you know Peter Jackson's famous you know let's just go again we'll do one more for luck and then he'd say look we'll we'll just do one more for luck and we heard that every day and it was just okay but um we yeah just just catching up with people and and having coffee and food and and just mocking each other and telling stories and yeah lots of silliness eh? that like when we we're on set. And Ohakuni up in the kind of mountains in the desert there doing the Mount Doom stuff when I was doing wardrobe assisting. we, I think we had a couple of parties and we had a party at like one of the local bars. So, you know, like probably like a couple of hundred or a minimum of a hundred crew and extras and featured extras all just taking over a bar and having food and booze and dancing and and, and just, just going crazy. Yeah, it's like, I mean... <laughs> You know, release releasing all the stuff from on set and just trying to dance it all off to get ready for the next week of, of, of you know minimum twelve hour days and and lots of movie magical moments, mm. um, lots of cigarettes, lots of cards, lots of coffees during the day, lots of sleeps. I used to grab a few blankets and and go and you know I remember jumping on a big heap and then one day we were having superstars of wrestling games in between shooting in the Europe costumes. And it was so much fun. I was like, man, this is this is some some tomfoolery, you know. We're we're getting paid to do this this silly stuff. Um, but but it was it was fine. It was all good. You know, everything was um was kosher and and just sense of humor. Like I was doing uh, I, what was I doing? I was doing. I had a DJ gig at a pub or a bar on every Tuesday night, and um, with a band called Duty Republic back in that in those times. And I remember going around on set worrying about finishing time so I could get home and then take the gear down to the pub to set up. And I remember rolling around on set Tuesday. I think I invited about to over 200 people to my gig at mm-hmm. the pub where I was just, you know, playing some beats and 
probably some hip hop and reggae and and had a band to support and um no one showed up like i think um the only person that showed up was um Lawrence Makari um was didn't he play Lutz or yeah that sounds like yeah he played Lutz and Gothmog and big mole follower you know which king he was the witch king as well yeah yeah, which king? And he and, and and when he was doing some online stuff, he he shot off and did some bad guy stuff on a James Bond movie, and he came back on set onto Lord of the Rings, and we were like, "Where were you?" And he's like, "I oh, just I was working on James Bond," and we we're like, "Whoa!" But he was the only guy that showed up to my gig, and so I sort of put on a a record and had a drink with him at the bar, and he told me his life story, and I was like, "Man, like of all the real people, you know." And he goes. Guess what my call time is? It's like four thirty or something, or three thirty in the morning. So mm-hmm. I couldn't believe it. Eh? Like he's like, I used to work on the roads as a road worker, you know, and kind of civil construction and stuff. And then people told me that I couldn't do it. And um, you know, I'm I'm working at the movies. I'm I'm doing workshops at the local, you know, New Zealand drama school, telling them how many drama degrees that you don't need to get into the industry. <laughs> and I was like, wow, this guy's a man, like. But yeah, just lots of um, lots of awesome serendipity from being in and around set, um, and um, I think yeah, one of my flatmates. I lived in a big warehouse um, halfway through the shooting, and some we had about twenty people, and a lot of us were working on the Lord of the Rings, and a lot of people were working as crew, doing lighting and um, grips and various other things, um, catering um, unit, and um, and it was like we had we had a whole network of people. And so I remember one time we put on a put on a party and we had probably three or four hundred people show up and and it was kind of like, you know, a good proportion of them were, were connected to this the, the you know, these Hollywood movies. Hmm. Um so so it was kind of yeah, it was it was definitely it it bled into our into our kind of normal lives offset as well, like this this um this phenomenon, this Lord of the Rings thing. Yeah. So, did you have any idea at the time that you were taking part in something that was going to be really special? Did you have any inkling, or, or was it you know only after the fact that you kind of realized, wow, I was I was a part of something that was really special? Yeah. Um. Good question. Um. At the time, like. Myself personally, I didn't realize just how big it would be, you know, for forever after kind of thing. You know, like it would be the greatest, biggest trilogy kind of, you know, the ever. Greatest trilogy of that, all time, yeah. <laughs> yeah, of all time, like up to that point, you know, like yeah. I mean, I, I didn't, I never stepped foot on on the Hobbit, so it was like my only experiences of, you know, Lord of the Rings is is the, is the first first three. But myself, I didn't, I didn't have an inclination. I mean, some people did, and they were trying to scale it to me. But I was like, oh yeah, I was like, oh, okay. you know, it's <laughs> kind of laughing it off, like, oh, you know, who knows what will happen. But then, I think it hit me with the first one when we did the parade. We were either Gondorian Rangers or no Gondorian Gondorian soldiers for the first premiere for the for the Wellington premiere, mm. and and just seeing the crazy coverage and going from like parliament to the, to the to the embassy theater where they played the movie and there was red carpet all down the the road and the streets were filled and there was like international media there was like CNN and this mm-hmm. and that fox and bbc and all these people with these fancy crews and we, and, the, and then it was like that that's when it hit i was like whoa this is <laughs> this is enormous you know like the whole the whole towns involved the whole countries involved and 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 then I think it was the return of the king one as well. I was like, well, it sort of doubled or tripled my expectations of of what it was or what it could be. And I was like, gee. <laughs> Luckily, I had a Gondorian ranger costume that day, so that was cool. Um, it was comfortable. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you, um, what was your feeling when you when you first saw them? And I know a lot of uh, a lot of actors they don't uh, they don't like to see themselves on screen. Um, of course you didn't have speaking parts but i mean you have to have known the scenes that you were in and was that weird for yeah. you uh what was the sense of when you when you saw it for the first time and uh did you enjoy it 
Yeah, good question. Um, it is a very good question. I remember feeling quite overwhelmed when I first even saw, like they say, the Fellowship of the Ring. I remember seeing it at the movies, and it was like I was watching the background more than I was watching the foreground. I felt quite emotional. I felt quite sad that I wasn't on that um, on that kind of fellowship journey with all of those good people. Um, at the same time, it was like all those sort of mixed emotions, you know, like I felt sadness, I felt relief. Uh, I It was difficult to watch it as a movie, as someone would watch a movie for the first time, because it was like just remembering all those locations and all those scenes and going, oh my God, I can't believe they cut that bit. Oh, that didn't even make it. Oh, they, they went in this direction. So it was mm. kind of like a, a pick a path mind kind of, right. you know, screw as well. And, and, and just really emotional, just going, wow, I can't believe that. Well, I can believe, but that, that that I and thousands and thousands of other folk, you know, good people, blood, sweat, and tears, put energy into that as as the sort of human drivers behind those characters. And I just remember feeling really like kind of overwhelmed, but grateful as well. Just like wow, like I can't believe that I know and was present with so many of those those scenes and and things. And it was kind of a weird feeling, but it, but it was also closure as well because it was it, once it went onto the screen, mm -hmm. it, it was like uh, it became someone else's. You know, we were there, you know, filling up the costumes, planning around on set during takes, doing what they wanted us to do, the director and things. But um, but yeah, as I say, once it hit that big screen, it was it was completely different. Um, yeah, it was like everyone else. It was like everyone else's movie after that. Like a, you know how like a song, you know, the songwriter once he once he prints it and plays it, everyone else kind of owns it. Um, yeah, but it was it was a strange feeling. Um, but yeah, different for each movie as well. Um, slightly different feelings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, overall, in the twenty yeah, years. Overall, overall great. <laughs> in the twenty years since, have you gone back to any of the locations? Um, yeah, weirdly enough, I have, <laughs> like, um, I mean, it's easy to get to, um, in Mount Victoria and, in Wellington where the hobbits are hiding under the, oh, yeah. um, the four hobbits are hiding. And then there's like a ring wraith that comes and has a sniff All and right, right. Mm -hmm. gets away. And then there was, there was a scene where I played a ring wraith where they, they did an aerial shot, like a sort of a high in the sky shot of, like ring race closing in on a hobbit. I don't know if you remember that sequence. Mm -hmm. It was just um, yeah. five in the morning. It was an old quarry in Mount Victoria, not far from that just scene that I mentioned. And that's easy to get to. But also, um, I went back to Rivendell. I've been back there a couple of times. Um, Kaitoki Forest. It's basically like 45 minutes north of Wellington, you know, just yeah. up a hut, yeah. which is actually a beautiful little native bush and, um, and, and river. And it's still got that beautifulness to it. It's still got this like real, it is a real Rivendell vibe. It's like, oh, this is pretty cool. You know, like, <laughs> hey, that's where we did the filming. But it's difficult to see because they've, you know, they they did a deal where they completely put it, put it back. They didn't right. pollute or change the, the nature of the forest in any way. And then the migrating elf, um, I, did, I did a couple of days there, um, migrating elves through the forest with the really tall pines. Which is in in white white Arary forest, which is actually not far from where I am just now. It's kind of just probably forty five minutes away, an hour away. Hmm. I've been down there and walked amongst those trees and gone, okay. yeah, like, yeah, we're we're migrating elves, like. That's cool. <laughs> and it, whoever, whoever did the locations did a really good job. Um, the location scouts, you know, they've um, they pretty much mastered it. Yeah. Yeah. So after that, you kind of you worked as a, a wardrobe assistant on after Helm's Deep, I should say. You worked as a wardrobe assistant for kind of Mount Doom and the Black Gate kind of stuff, and then you went into pickup shooting, right? Yeah. Um, so I think I remember like everyone went down south to do the whole, you know, Rohan and. Um, various for a couple of months and I was like no I just needed a break so it sounds like a bit of a quitter but I, I ended up getting a job in the city which was which was an odd experience after spending you know 
six or seven months working on a on a major movie. So I was out, I was on the bench, and then um, went yeah went back went back into into pickup shooting, and that and that went on and on and on. Um, hmm. And so yeah, the, the wardrobe stuff that was kind of cool. That was went up as a as an elf and a prologue um, elf up the mountain with a whole lot of other elves and Yurikai. And then got a job on the wardrobe. So we were putting costumes on to all the army extras and the defense force personnel and then sending them out in like those Mercedes trucks out into the desert to do their fighting. And we were sort of just making checks during the day and then um, helping them you know, just stack their costumes at night, which was pretty cool. Um, and did a little bit more wardrobe stuff back in the city. So we did some stuff out in – what did we do? We did some stuff out in Titahi Bay where it was the same stuff, just putting costumes on people, making checks during the day, and then driving them back to the, the studio. Um, and then there was pickup shots. Um, like, for example, the only feature that I had in the movie, the firing the arrow in the two towers as a fighting elf, Balglin. I had been in, uh, that was in a warehouse, like pretty much right next door to the airport in, in Wellington City, so just not far from the main Stone Street Studios. Um, and it's like I'd been hanging around, sitting around waiting for, I wasn't even sure what, what was happening, but they were just like, we'll put you in hero, Alvin hero armor today with the real hair wig and spend a bit of time um, putting you in makeup and making you look good just in case we're going to use you. And then I was, I kind of lost hope. I was like, uh, I don't know, it was a few days. And then um, I'd gone back into non hero outfit. And um, so I had a, like a polystyrene wig and a plastic helmet and a different um, chest piece. And then they, they changed because, you know, the schedule's constantly changing, mm -hmm. um, the, the shooting schedule. So they were like, oh, actually, we're going we're gonna to feature you now. So I remember the casting agent came out and said, oh, Andy, um, we're, we're going to use you now. So, you know, um, and then there was a real hustle because they, they were just like, chuck the hero armor on. And I was like, oh, but what about my hair? My hair is crap. And he goes, man, he goes, don't worry about it. We just chuck a hero helmet on you. Boom, you're away. And then took me up and said, because it was Peter Jackson's unit. So he was shooting mm. it that day. And um, he said, oh, Peter Jackson, this is Andy. He's going to he's gonna be the off and fire an arrow and blah, blah, blah. And he was really nice. Like, he, he was the loveliest guy. Like, everyone likes Peter, you know. Um, and he's just got this real kind of, hello, sir, how are you? How are you feeling? Oh, you look great. You know, good on you. <laughs> you know, and you're like, wow, you just feel really, it makes you feel relaxed and calm and like you can do your job. Mm. And and then we're up on the wall in the, in the warehouse with the rain tower. And we did a couple of, we, I think we did some rehearsals. And then I fired like a, a balsa arrow. <laughs> they even had a target for me. <laughs> so oh, nice. <laughs> they were like, just just hit this, and they had the camera real close to it. And um, I like I felt stink because I wanted to do like a straight face, like that whole you know I am three thousand years old mm. for the cameo. But then I also wanted to sell the emotion that we were actually in a fight, so I sort of put on this kind of this face thing. And one of the stunt guys afterwards, when he saw it, I think it was a cinematic cut. He goes, "Oh, you did the the, the Maori. It's like a little half a kind of pukana, which is like a war face, like a sort of." <laughs> Like a kind of showing a bit of fierceness on your face. Right. And I said, I actually, I can't believe you picked that up. I actually was trying to do it like just a little bit, but it was all, in, it was all, and and I was with full respect as well because I really wanted to just kill kill the enemy, you know. Mm. Um, but I also couldn't believe that I was having my my feature, you know, just after being there so long and being in so many little battles and always just. Just being a you know a number in the crowd and 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 essentially it was just people go well, why did you do that so I just wanted to have a little a little hi mum moment like hi mum <laughs> I got an I got in a movie you know <laughs> yeah yeah and, and that's all it was your your yeah. three words like a, three years of work just paid off for that one I know. it's kind of like yeah. I don't know if you've seen that movie Rudy you know where he goes to Notre Dame and he works for years and years and years for six glorious seconds on the football field. <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh, I'm probably going to go watch it now. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's, yeah. it's that stuff. Eh? Um, I mean, there was, there were people that came over like, and just did days on set. Like, I think it was, 
Um, there was a lot of actors from Wellington that you know, or p- potentially around New Zealand that just came on, 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 you know, on set for a week or a day and just you know organised it with casting and got a little, got a little feature. And, and and if it was well organised, they would get in and get out. Some of them spent a week on there doing, you know, featuring or you know, so on and so forth. I think it was someone said, yeah, that's right. Um, um, Roy Tolkien, he was there for like a, a week or two, might have been that's a week right. as a like yeah. a Gondor ranger or a soldier or something, and said hi to him. So hey, there's the there's the guy, you know. <laughs> it was exciting. Um, and I remember there was a kid from New York, you know, or somewhere maybe from necessarily from New York, but somewhere in the states. And I was like, hey man, he was just handing out drinks, and he was young. I was like, hey, how old are you? And he said, oh, I'm like twelve. And I was like, oh, yeah, how'd you get into this? He's like, man, I just I love Lord of the Rings and Peter Jackson. I just um, wrote him. I hand wrote him a letter. I just said, "Yo, I'm out here. Can I come out and do some stuff on the movie?" And he said, "Yeah, come out." <laughs> so he was just oh, he was just man, rolling around awesome. the team, giving out drinks to everyone. And I was like, "Wow, this is cool." And uh, yeah, so there was a lot of lot of folk that that wanted to be there, um, that that were there. So. Yeah, and everyone would say, you know, it's the film industry. If you know someone, if you just know someone, you can essentially get an opening as a, as either a crew person or a um, an extra. Hmm. Um, yeah. I mean, how did that? Uh, how did the process work for you as an extra uh, to be featured? Did you? Uh, like, was your name on the list as someone that say, hey, if if you need someone for that sort of thing, um. Or they would just randomly select people that caught their eye throughout many of the shoots and say, "That guy, but we we know yeah, he's going to be good for the seat." So, what was that process yeah, like? Good question, eh? Like, I mean, I was ultimately, I mean, I was a different person when I was twenty five or twenty six, and I was just kind of like wanting to feature, but I never once said, "Hey, I want to feature." to the you know to the casting agents um because they were I, I figured that they were were managing the process potentially um although i did once cold call one of the key casting agents one of the main casting agents for the core cast because i had an agent and i'd done one play and i was like hey you know it's me it's it's andy gunn you know like I've just seen a few, you know, if you, if you know, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and she, and she was like, oh, it's Andy Gunn. Oh, hey, man. And, you know, just this a little bit of a talk. And I think I got in their, their mind. But no, on Lord of the Rings, it was nothing like that. I mean, maybe actors, maybe well-known actors were, were having that conversation. Oh, oh, you know, can I come in and feature? I'd love to feature. And they were having that. But for me, all it was was one of the casting agents asking me cold, just saying, hey, because I was doing a lot of, you know, so I was, Doing a lot of stunty stuff with that, with that kind of PNS stunt team, if you like PNS stunt extras, you know mm-hmm. the background fight team. So we were well known to casting. Um, but she just said, "Hey man, have you had your feature yet?" Yeah. And I said, "No." And this was after years. And she's like, "Really? Have you have you not?" And I was like, "No." <laughs> and she's like, "Oh, I will we'll leave it with me. We'll see if we can sort something out." <laughs> that was the, that was the process yeah. for 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 me as far as I'm concerned. But I'm sure. I'm sure if you were a well-established artist actor, you you would have had a different conversation um, to feature. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you you played an elf. You played a ranger. You played uh, Gondorians. You played an Eric. Did yes. you have a favorite kind of role? Was it your feature that was your favorite, or did you did you have a favorite kind of culture that you <laughs> that you liked to? the most um favorite feature favorite culture favorite character kind of vibe um the fighting off was was quite tough because it was like the helmet was too tight <laughs> coolest costume you know looked looked the coolest in your firing arrow so it's probably a favorite for a lot of people um but i kind of enjoyed um the rohan character and costume um because i remember one time we had this sort of, it was like very viking you know with the viking thing with the sort of a horse thing there and and um and i remember i had this it looked like overalls looked like a pair of kaha overalls mm. but it sort of went around like that and it strapped on it looked like a big butcher's apron but it was all like i used to call it fish scale armor and i had that on quite a bit 
and I was just essentially like a Rohan kind of, not even a hero, just a kind of a middle middle of the road kind of Rohan extra guy, with a with a double edged sort of medium Rohan sword, and it was comfortable and like big big leather boots, not sort of fine dainty boots like the, the elven boots, mm-hmm. and just rolling around like on top of a castle at four a.m. in the pouring rain, throwing fake rocks down onto the the, the enemy with other uh, people with big big beards that were like big and red and we were, I was like man it's just it just felt good I was like man I just feel like I was here you know like 800 years ago I was actually doing this I was viking because I've got mm. irish and scots heritage and you know like this this is who I am these are my people <laughs> mm. you know so that was that was the coolest um and probably just the other thing was just wearing the ears like sitting in the chair being at rivendell and not even having a weapon on your person, you know, it's just just being a being a kind of a, an academic, you know, like a three thousand year old, you know, like Rivendell elf, um, and and a real hair wig, and and having your makeup done perfectly, just in case you you are in, in, in shot. Mm. And I remember we were out in that 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 native forest, Rivendell, one day, and hanging around with a bunch of probably probably about twenty five females. Rivendell elves and probably about five or ten guys, and it was all these beautiful women. Eh? And it was kind of like it was kind of like you know hot. It was breathtaking to see all these beautiful women all dressed up in these amazing Rivendell costumes. It was like oh, oh my, look at her! And mm. I think I remember like getting the courage to just walk up and go, oh, hey, um, how's it going? You know, my name's Andy. <laughs> you know, like how's your day? Or you know, just trying to try to reach out. You know, as a single man and. And like this woman just was just breathtakingly beautiful. And um and she's like, Oh, g'day, mate, how are you? And and she just like her voice didn't match how she looked. And I was yeah. like, oh. I was like, oh, where are you from? Where are you from, girl? And she's like, Oh, I'm a Kiwi man, you know. I've been I've been a model in uh, in Europe for the last few years, but uh, you know, you know, mate, I got I got called back to, to be a Rivendell elf, bro, you know, and just smoking away. <laughs> and I was like, man, like, you know, you're just completely <laughs> different to what you'd expect but yeah um, yeah yeah cool stuff cool cool stuff fun stuff um but yeah just i don't know i think i turned up to that set by accident one day which sounds crazy but i just assumed because my friend was booked i was booked so i just jumped in the transport and turned up there and they were like what what are you doing here bro and i was like what what do you mean <laughs> I'm waiting to go to wardrobe and they're like, you're not even booked. You shouldn't even be here. How did you get here? <laughs> I was like, oh, I was like, you they're like, they're like, oh no, you're not supposed to be here. Did you just assume that you were on? Cause you, cause the same sorts of people were on. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, no, 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 no. And then they, they, they went back and forth. They're like, oh, but we might try and get you on, but we might not, but we, and they tried and then it failed, tried and failed. I think they might've tried a third time and they said, nah, just someone's going to drive you the hour back to the city. <laughs> I was like, don't like, don't don't worry, bro. Don't worry, it's all good. It's all good. You know? But just just for fun. <laughs> undercover undercover elf <laughs> imposter <Yeah>. elf. <laughs> a spy. Yeah, try hard elf. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, always grateful. Always grateful for that stuff. Mm. Mm. And then there was, I think it was another pickup shot where I was a Gondorian soldier. And, you know, we had, there was some pickup shot for a scene between um, Aragorn and, and Arwen, you know, Liv Tyler and Vigo, some kind of kissy scene, or it could have been, yeah, it might have been a lead into King Aragorn. And they were just like, we want you to say, Alessa, Alessa. And mm-hmm. then we want this this troop of Gondorian soldiers to to kind of call it out as one, Alessa, Alessa. So we did it. It was like, Alessa, Alessa. And then, Alessa, with like a hundred or fifty. Mm. And that was cool. And he and Vigo just stood there and just called out to him. And it was kind of, um, that was weird. It didn't, it didn't actually feel that organic, but they cut it. I don't think they used it. I think mm. they just dumped it in the recycle bin or on the cutting room floor. Um, yeah, the pickup shot. The pickup shots were weird because it's like you'd done all the stuff out in location or somewhere, and then six months later, you were in a in a studio or in a soundstage doing little similar little bits and bobs, and it was kind of it was hot, mm. <laughs> and you're just like a little bit over it. You're like, oh, 
although we did this like six months ago. And they're like, no, 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 we just need to do this bit. And you're like, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Well, it sounds like it was just an incredible experience mm -hmm. and, you know, kind of a once in a lifetime experience. And uh, I know the next time I watch, I will be looking for you and be like, oh, yeah, there's Andy. Or, there's Andy. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, totally. Um, Tyler. Um, yeah, it was a once in a lifetime opportunity. It was it was weird. And I was like, I didn't. At first, I, I wasn't like there were people that knew the book inside and outside and everywhere. And I wasn't one of those people. I think I'd stolen a copy of The Hobbit from my school when I was about 10. And I'd had it at home because it had a dragon on the front of it. And I was like, that's cool. I'm going to read mm -hmm. that book at some stage. But, you know, people were rolling around on set with three or four books and getting signatures from everyone. I wasn't I wasn't that guy. But, yeah, I mean, it was. It was phenomenal. It was a, just just being there and, and, and seeing, you know, these crazy things from, like, you know, being part of, I don't know, 100 Urix forming like a tank and then just battering down the, the door, going up the ramp into – into Helm's Deep or being on the other side. We, we, we were playing both. We were being elves or Gondorians or whatever on the other side and seeing them breach that that castle door type thing. Mm -hmm. That was pretty cool, doing doing that over and over and over and over again um, and and battling with horses, um, trying to pull riders off, but not really, you know, and, mm -hmm. uh, all, all kinds of stuff and just battling with a friend, you know, grabbing a partner and creating a little fight and then sort of, yeah, just doing those, those three, four second fights. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it was kind of like, I'd probably do it again. You know, like I, someone was talking about rings of power, you know, and I was like, man, like 20 years later, it'd be great to go on and just do something, yeah, you know, just to, just to be there, just to put a little, yeah, I don't know, put a costume on. Yeah. This time you can I be was gonna say because you <laughs> yeah, you mentioned once in a lifetime opportunity, but for some it was actually twice in a lifetime opportunity because uh, in the more recent uh, Hobbit trilogy, where did yes. were you were you aware? Were you called? Did you think I might try that? That didn't happen, or you just weren't into it anymore because it was <laughs> fifteen years almost later. Yeah, uh, I think. I it was so yeah, it was a lot later and um I saw some a lot of the same um folk, a lot of the guys on the stunts and stuff and a lot of those featured extras that that, that did the, the you know, the first trilogy, they just carried on as as normal and I think that stayed in the industry and it just it just worked hard. So when when the Hobbit opportunity came around it was kind of you know, it was just there wasn't no it wasn't anything for them to just step up and do that. And I remember seeing some making of stuff and some doco stuff of some of the folk that, that I worked with in the in the first trilogy. But myself, I, I was kind of I don't know what I was doing. I think I, I wasn't interested in, in in doing more days on set at that time. Um, which is it's just kind of stink now, like, oh, it could have been all good, you know, you could have gone and done the Hobbit as well. But um yeah, it just it was just it was just something that just didn't happen for me. Um just with life. Life got in the way. <laughs> um but I'm also grateful for that too. Yeah. Um, right. But yeah, someone mentioned Ring for Power, and I was like, that would be cool. You know, now, like all these years later, I just, you know, something completely different. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for, for joining us, Andy. Uh, it, was, it was a really great pleasure just to kind of hear about your experience through it. And, uh, you know, we want to thank you too for, you know, just the work that you put in. You know, it, it, you know, there was hundreds of guys like yourself, you know, but those movies wouldn't have been what they are today if it wasn't for guys like yourself who really put in a lot of work and, you know, really long hours for, you know, not a lot of, rec you know, recognition at the time. And so thank you for the, for all the effort you put in and, uh, you know, um, for and for joining us here tonight. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you're you. welcome. Yeah, thanks, Val, Chris. Thanks, Tyler. Um, yeah, thanks for having me on here, guys. And um, yeah, I'm really grateful. And and I see what you guys are doing. And and um, yeah, just a shout out to all the all the folk out there that 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 are collectors and are serious. And um, 
you know, if you if you do get an opportunity to, um, as I say, to be on a film set or to be in and around a production that you that you're interested in, yeah, definitely definitely seize the opportunity yeah, because you, I don't think you'll be um, you won't be let down by the opportunity. You'll probably um, always remember it like like I did with Rings. Um, yeah. So yeah, thanks again, and, and I'm very grateful for, for what you guys have done here today. <laughs> yeah, Jeez. definitely. And, it was uh, all ours. If you guys want to show uh, Andy some love, we have a, a link. We'll have a link in the description for this episode where you can uh, show Andy some love there and uh, um, and just show him uh, our appreciation for having him on the on the show here tonight. So, with that, I think yeah. we will say good night. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Good night.